name is Zi Hui and I'm the PSLE Science Specialist from the Pig Lab Learning Center. So today I'll be talking about four life processes that's really important for the survival of living organisms. Now when I'm talking about four life processes, what am I referring to? Let me give you a clue. The first one starts with P and it stands for photosynthesis. So what is photosynthesis? It is a process that requires three conditions to make food and oxygen. And these three conditions are water, sunlight, and carbon dioxide. So with all of these three conditions, plants and certain bacterial cells will be able to photosynthesize to make food and oxygen. But since bacterial cells is not covered in our syllabus, we will not be talking about them in this video, but focus on plants instead. Now let's move on to the next process, which starts with R, and it stands for respiration. So respiration is a process that requires two conditions to release energy and carbon dioxide. And these two conditions are oxygen and digested food. Now, I wanted to take note that whenever we are talking about digested food, we are referring to animals and human beings eating and digesting them. How about plants? Do plants require digested food? They do not because they make their own food instead of digesting them. So rather than saying plants require digested food, we say that plants require food for respiration to release energy and carbon dioxide. So now let's move on to the next process, which is starts with T and it stands for transpiration. So some teachers might not have mentioned this term to you, but it basically means that water vapor is lost through the stomata of the plant. So what's the definition of stomata? There are tiny openings found mainly on the underside of the leaves for exchange of gases. So they're essentially the nostrils of the plant. Last but not least, we have the fourth process which starts with D and it stands for decomposition. So decomposition is a process that requires the decomposers to break down dead matter into simpler substances. So who are the decomposers then? They are bacteria and fungi. So a very common misconception is that organisms such as earthworms and mites are decomposers. But in fact, they are not. They are actually the agents of decomposition. So that is why it's very important for us to recognize what living organisms carry out each of these processes and remember the gases involved as well as important body words. So what I mean by body words is that these words are always associated with the life process. For example, whenever we mention photosynthesis, you must always link it back to to make food. As for respiration, we must always link it back to to release energy. So I'm going to help you to refine your thought process so that all of the information will be at your fingertips and when you analyze exam questions, everything will come straight to you. So let's start off with photosynthesis. What exactly is photosynthesis? So as mentioned earlier, photosynthesis requires three conditions which are water, sunlight and carbon dioxide to make food and oxygen. So how does the plant obtain all of them? For water, it is absorbed through the roots in the soil, which is transported through the water-carrying tubes in the stem and then to the leaves. How about sunlight? Sunlight will be trapped by the chloroplast containing chlorophyll in the leaves. So leaves, they come in different shapes and sizes that will affect their exposed surface area. So the amount of sunlight is trapped is determined by the exposed surface area of the leaf. With a larger exposed surface area, will the leaf trap more or less sunlight? It will trap more sunlight. And on the other hand, if it has a smaller exposed surface area, will it trap more or less sunlight? It will trap less sunlight. And as for carbon dioxide, it will be taken in through the stomata, which is found mainly on the underside of the leaf for exchange of gases. Alright, so with all these three conditions, plants, they photosynthesize to produce oxygen and food. So where do these products go to? For oxygen, it will be given out through the stomata. And as for food, it will be transported through the 
food carrying tubes to all parts of the plant, including the roots. So the plants themselves also serve as food for the living organisms as well, for them to grow and reproduce so that they can continue their own kind. So with oxygen and digested food, the animal's body cells will undergo respiration to release energy and carbon dioxide. So now that we have covered both photosynthesis and respiration, it's very important to remember the exchange of gases in both. So what is taken in and what is given out. So for photosynthesis, carbon dioxide will be taken in and oxygen will be given out. And as for respiration, oxygen will be taken in and carbon dioxide will be given out. Now there's another gas that is given out through the stomata as well and that is water vapor. So where did the water vapor come from? Did it come in from the stomata of the leaves as well? No. So water vapor must have evaporated from water, correct? So where did the water come from? As mentioned earlier, water will be absorbed by the roots in the soil and transported through the water carrying tubes in the stem and then to the leaves. So at the stomata, Water gains heat from the warmer surrounding air and evaporates into water vapour. So water vapour will be lost through the stomata back into the atmosphere through the process of transpiration. Alright, and then we have gone to the last process which is decomposition. So it's very important to take note that agents of decomposition and decomposers are very different. So agents, which includes earthworms and mites, help to break down dead matter into smaller pieces. And these smaller pieces help to increase exposed surface area for the decomposers to act on. So these smaller pieces of dead matter will be converted into simpler substances and then they are returned to the soil as fertilizers for plants in the nutrient cycle. So now I've covered all four life processes, which include photosynthesis, respiration, transpiration, and decomposition. I hope you have better understanding on all of these life processes, which are really important for the survival of living organisms. Thank you for watching this video. If you felt that the video was useful, give us a thumbs up and drop us a note in the comment section below so that we know we're on the right track. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and click here for more. See you next time.